So I've got a lot of stream decks. Obviously this is an insane setup. Nobody needs to have eight stream decks, but you know, I'm a spoiled YouTuber and I just have access to them, so why not? But I do actually use three Stream Deck in my main setup. I've got two Stream Deck XLs next to a Stream Deck Plus in the middle, the one that has the knobs. Now, you might be thinking, what could you possibly need three Stream Decks for? Like, what do you even do with the buttons? And knowing me, you probably think that I've loaded up a whole bunch of plugins with really complicated multi actions in all my Stream Decks, but you'll be surprised to find out that. It's actually a pretty vanilla setup, but I thought I'd take you through a tour of my stream decks anyway, so you can get some ideas of how to lay out and organize your buttons for your own setup. Do you have that activate Windows watermark on your PC? Well, stop that, that's cringe. Instead, head on over to VIP SCD key and get a Windows 10 Pro OEM license without paying the retail price of like, a million dollars. You can pay using a secure payment method like PayPal, they'll send you over an activation key, you shove that right into your Windows settings, and boom, your Windows is activated. And yes, these keys are permanent, they are real, I've done this a bunch of times, these are legit Windows licenses. Then you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free, or if it's more convenient for you, you can also get a Windows 11 Pro key instead. Be sure to use the code NUTTY at checkout to get 25% off for a limited time and enjoy your watermark free copy of Windows. Now the first question I get asked all the time is, Nutty, you big dingus, you silly goose, you, you baked potato. You can just set up folders and have infinite number of buttons. And yes, that's true. But, you know, Elgato wanted to send me all the stream decks, so you think I'm gonna say no to that? But more importantly, I like having all of my most used functions on the top layer because when I'm streaming, I'm a one-man crew. I have to control my stream, I have to entertain my audience, I gotta worry about my audio, and I don't like to have to fiddle down and look down and navigate through folders whenever I just wanna like change a camera angle or something. So I find that having more buttons just allows me to focus more on my stream and less on the technical aspect of running my stream, if that makes sense. Now, stream decks use a lot of power more than most USB devices because they have to light up that big LED screen beneath the buttons. So I have all of my stream decks connected to a 16 port powered USB hub, which I just have mounted underneath my desk. Now it's important that if you're going to do this, that you make sure that your USB hub is a powered USB hub because if you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, the way I've laid out my buttons, I like to group similar actions onto separate stream decks. So, for example, the rightmost stream deck is dedicated to lighting control, changing camera angles, and other of my most used controls. The center stream deck plus is dedicated to just audio control, so things like music playback and adjusting the levels for each of my audio channels. And the left stream deck is what I use for my streams, so for changing scenes and activating all the different effects that you see seen in my Twitch stream. Go follow me on Twitch, okay? I'm not gonna beg you to do it, just do it. And finally, the pedals are for the scenes that I use the most when I stream. And I find that having them quick access at my feet just makes it more likely for me to change scenes. And that way my stream ends up being more dynamic and fun and people get different stimulation rather than just looking at the exact same scene for like eight hours. So let's take a more detailed look into each stream deck individually. You coming or what? We're gonna look at the rightmost stream deck first. So the top row, you'll have all of my lighting controls. So these just control the different lights I have around my studio. And yes, I can call it a studio now because I got rid of the bed. The first three are just on and off switches for the Elgato key lights that I have in my room. So I've got a key light on my left, on my right, and then another one that I use as my hair light. But the last three buttons control the colored lighting on my shelf. So I've got a blue light here, and a purple light here, and then there's another blue light over on the other wall that you guys can't see. Now what's interesting about these three buttons is that these colored lights are not Elgato branded lights, and so I had to write my own script to turn on and off the lights, and then inside of the Stream Deck software, instead of dragging a button to turn on and off a light, I had to open up a program which opens up my script to turn the lights on and off. So it's pretty cool that even though my lights aren't from Elgato, if you're clever enough, you can still use your Stream Deck to control them. I'm not really sure how much they would like me doing that, but 
You can do anything with a stream deck, so I figured why not. The next two rows act as a sort of camera switcher. So I have a six camera setup in my room, which don't ask me about it. I'll have to make another video. But basically I've got six cameras and the first row here will change to any of my six cameras for the first camera port. And then the second row will do the exact same thing but for the other camera port. And the way that this camera switcher works is a lot simpler than you might expect. It just use, what the fuck happened to my voice? It just uses the normal source toggle action that you can do on any stream deck. So when I turn camera two on, it's just turning on the camera two source. But you'll notice that when I turn each of the cameras on, it turns off the source for the camera that was already turned on. And you might be thinking that I'm using some kind of multi-action from the Stream Deck. And I'm actually not doing that at all. I'm actually using a script called Source Toggler. And what you can do with that script is you can stack all of your cameras on top of each other in their own dedicated scene. And using the Source Toggler script, it will detect whenever you turn on a new camera and automatically turn off the other camera without you having to do anything. And I've just done that two times for each row here so I can have two different camera ports. And this makes it way easier to program my stream deck because I don't have to do this huge multi-action. I just have to do the regular source toggle that everyone knows how to do. The stack of six buttons in the corner here is the exact same concept as the two camera switchers that I have in these rows, but for my monitors. I have a four monitor setup plus a Nintendo Switch and a capture card. And rather than creating a separate scene for each of my monitors, I just created one scene that looks like this. And then if I want to change which monitor is displaying, I just use each of the six buttons here to change my monitor. Or if I want to display my switch, I just press this button. I don't have my switch plugged in, but that would be showing my switch if I had it plugged in. But each of the six buttons here, it just turns on and off a display capture in OBS. So the programming side on the Stream Deck is, it's like Kingdom Hearts. It's simple and clean. Now in the bottom right, I have a button that says Reboot Deck. Now, sometimes your Stream Deck, the software messes up and sometimes you have to go into the Task Manager, kill the Stream Deck software and then relaunch the Stream Deck program. So what I did was, Instead of doing all that, I made my Stream Deck reboot itself. It's a very simple two line script that I wrote inside of Notepad. And I just saved that as a batch script and opened that up with my Stream Deck. And boom, it just reboots the Stream Deck. It fixes itself. This button here controls the fan speeds of my PC. I actually did a video on how to do this on the second YouTube channel. I'll leave that link in the corner up here. I also made a TikTok video. Did you guys know what I'm TikTok by the way? I'm trying to make TikTok videos. You go follow me on TikTok. But essentially I can press this button here and it opens up a folder and I have three different fan speed profiles for my PC. So if I'm gaming and I don't care if my PC fans are like full blast, I just press this button here and then the fans kick in and they get super loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but... Hear that? This button here displays the action bar for my Stream Deck pedals. So if you have Stream Deck pedals, obviously your Stream Deck pedals don't have LED screens on them that you can look at. So what the Stream Deck software does is it displays each of the buttons inside of what they call an action bar. And you can toggle on and off that action bar from your Stream Deck if you wanted to. This button here says clear whiteboard. So there's this plugin for OBS that I've talked about. I'll leave that link up here that basically turns OBS into like a whiteboard. So you can like draw on your face or whatever, do whatever you want. And then if I want to clear the whiteboard, I just press that clear whiteboard button. This one here is an eyedropper tool. We've also talked about this one in a previous video, but basically I can hover my mouse anywhere I want on my monitor. And if I want to figure out what color is underneath my mouse cursor, I just press the eyedropper tool and it not only shows what color that was on the Stream Deck, but it also copies the hex code to my clipboard. And so I can paste that in wherever I want. And then finally, the last two buttons here, they just change the profile of my other Stream Decks. So my other Stream Decks have a different page that I use just for streaming and then a different set of pages that I use just for recording YouTube videos. And if I ever wanna change between each of those two modes, I just press a button here and it changes all of the pages of my other Stream Decks. Let's move on to the Stream Deck Plus. So this is what I've used to control everything audio. So we're gonna start with the top 
physical buttons first. The first row is what I use for my sampler. So this uses the Sound Deck plugin for Stream Deck. If you've ever used something like a Go XLR before, it works pretty much the same as that. So I could use any of these three buttons here. Let's just use this one and I can record what I want. And then now if I press this button again, it will play that sound back. If I want to record a new sample, I can just press this button here and I can clear any of these three banks. So this one, and then now this third bank here is ready to record a new sample. I'm leaving that one in there. This button here is pretty straightforward. It just changes my audio output from my speakers to my headphones and it uses the Wavelink software to do that. And then I've got two folders here. So if I go into the microphones folder, remember how I set up that camera switcher thing with the first stream deck. So I've done the same thing here, but for a microphone switcher. So I have multiple microphones set up. I've got a dialogue microphone here so I can have the mic out of my face. But if I wanna have the mic in my face, I've got a second mic here and I can switch to that mic by just pressing on the button there. And now I'm using a totally different mic. The audio folder is also pretty straightforward. So inside of OBS, I've got different audio sources set up for my music, for my game audio, for Discord, and that uses the Win Capture Audio plugin for OBS. And so if I wanna toggle off just my music for you guys, I can just press the button here that turns off the music or turn off the sound effects. And then this one is just, it's just a media toggle for music because my keyboard, I got one of those tiny keyboards that doesn't have like a media button on it. So I just, I put that on my stream deck. And then finally we have the knobs here. And basically I just use these to control the Wavelink software. So one of the benefits of the Stream Deck Plus is it unlocks the Elgato Wavelink software. So I can separate all of my music, my game audio, sound effects, everything I want can be separate. And then I can control the levels for each of those different channels using the knobs on the Stream Deck, or I can toggle them on and off using the touchscreen or clicking into the knobs. And even though there's only four knobs, this is a touchscreen. So if I wanna have more functions for my knobs, I can just swipe to another page and I have access to even more audio channels. Now you can use the Stream Deck Plus to control more than just your audio. If you have Elgato key lights, you can use it to control the brightness of the key lights. Or if you have an Elgato face cam, you can zoom in and out or scrub inside your timeline in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, but for me personally, I just like to think of my Stream Deck Plus as the thing that I use to control audio. It just saves me some brain power. Moving on to my second Stream Deck XL, this is what I like to think of as my dynamic Stream Deck. So what shows on this changes depending on what I'm doing. So this is my streaming profile, and if I use that button on my first Stream Deck, to change to the recording profile, it switches to a totally different page. We'll start with my streaming profile. So in the top left, I have a start streaming and start recording button. But for these buttons, I've turned on the setting in the Stream Deck software so that they only activate when I hold them down. So if I just press it once quickly, it doesn't accidentally start streaming. So if I really wanna start streaming, I have to hold that button down. This cluster of nine buttons here is just simple scene switches. And I only put the scenes that I use the most here. But if I go into this folder here, this will show all of my scenes. So some scenes I only use rarely and I'm okay with hiding those behind a folder. But if I'm using it all the time, I want it to be on the top layer. These three buttons here on the side are filter toggles. So if I go to my just chatting scene and if I press on each of these three buttons, it slides in different sources. So if I press this one here, it slides in my secondary camera or if I press this one here, it will slide in my desktop. If I press this one, it will slide in like a four by three version of my game. This is what I use for when I'm playing like Super Nintendo games and stuff. Or N64 games. N64 is mid as f mm. by the way. But I like to slide in my secondary camera every so often if I'm trying to show something off just to keep the stream a little bit more 
interactive and engaging and then I can switch to my secondary scene like this and everything animates using the move transition plugin for OBS. Along the bottom row, I just have an assortment of a bunch of different actions that I use often. So for example, whenever I wanna start my stream, I have a big multi-action that launches all of my different programs so I don't have to like turn on my lights, open up OBS, open up StreamerBot, open up my music app and all that kind of stuff. I can just press one button and everything opens at once. This button here, I love this one. It's a resize button. So it uses the Windows Mover and Resizer plugin for Stream Deck. And when I press it, all my windows go and automatically reposition themselves on screen. So I don't have to drag each window one by one with my mouse. Over here, I have two different zoom buttons. So this button here, if I'm on my desktop and I wanna get a closer look at my screen so my audience doesn't have to like squint their eyes, I can press this zoom button and it will zoom in and follow my mouse. So this uses the zoom and follow script for OBS. I've talked about this in a separate video as well. And then the second zoom button says enhance and this basically just zooms into that second camera port. And I use this all the time whenever I wanna read out these little sub receipts because every time someone subs to my channel, it prints out these little receipts and then I can just press the enhance button and then it zooms into the little sub paper. In the bottom left corner, I have four different folders I can navigate into. The first one says channel points and this page just lets me run all of my different streamer bot channel point rewards. So if you don't know what streamer bot is, it's a program that allows you to make these huge stream deck like multi actions but on steroids. So here's a Twitch channel point reward that allows people to punch me in the face or this one, Do a barrel barrel roll. you know, just a bunch of different effects like that. I'm not gonna go through all of the effects one at a time because then we'd be here all, you know what? The BitMenu folder is more or less the same thing. On my Twitch stream, there's a whole bunch of effects that my viewers can redeem by giving me Twitch bits. And this folder just allows me to test those effects in real time. So there's one effect that people can redeem for 69 bits. It just does that. And then if people give me 111 bits. The games folder is pretty simple. It just allows me to change my Twitch category without having to go into my dashboard. And then finally, the streamer bot folder has a bunch of streamer bot actions that I've programmed that I wanna test out for my stream deck. So for example, the streaming stampede game is here, which is a, a game where my viewers can count Pokemon as they cross the screen, kind of like in Pokemon Stadium 2. If you haven't seen this, by the way, I talked more about it in one of the streamer showcase episodes. So I'll leave a link to that so you can, you can and watch it or you can just go to my Twitch stream and then ask me to play the game. And then the remaining buttons, this one here just turns on and off my snap cam video source. These ones here just turn on and off my custom made widgets that are available on Patreon. So the first one is the Twitch poll widget. So whenever you create a Twitch poll, it automatically shows a little widget on screen so you can see the results of the poll. And the button here just shows and hides that widget. And then the same one for these two. So this one hides the Twitch channel point prediction widget, and this one is the hype train widget. And just to demonstrate one of those widgets, if I go to my desktop scene here, and I press this button that says quick poll, it automatically creates a poll on Twitch, and then shows that little overlay with the poll results. But by pressing this button that says toggle poll, I can show and hide that poll widget. So there it is, those are all of my stream decks. What's that? Oh, oh, you're still watching. Okay, so that either means A, you really like my content, or B, you've been waiting 19 minutes to see a video of my feet. And that's fucking weird, Kevin. You're 29 years old, go to sleep. But you know what, I've been recording for like five hours. So you know what, I'm ready to get weird. So let me show you what's on my pedals, yeah? One of the cool things I did was I connected both of the pedals together. So I just cut out a piece of wood, stuck it in between them. And so now they can both slide together as if they were one connected set of pedals rather than two separate pedals. Then I just assigned each of the six pedals to my most used functions. So this pedal here just switches to my desktop scene 
And then if I hit this middle button, it will zoom in and out of my desktop. So if you wanna get a closer look at my desktop, you can see that. And here you'll be able to see the action bar. So this is what I see so that I know what each pedal does. And then this button here will just switch to a bigger version of my desktop scene. This one will switch to a dual cam scene so you can see both of my camera viewports. Uh, and this middle button here will just zoom in and out of that secondary viewport. And then this one here will just go back to my just chatting scene. Weird feet fetishes aside, I really like this foot pedal setup because it means that A, I don't have to look down at my stream deck and break that immersion for my viewers, but B, because those scene switches are so easily accessible just at my feet, I am more encouraged to actually change scenes when I'm streaming, which makes the stream a lot more interesting to look at rather than just looking at the exact same scene all the time. But guys, I hope you enjoyed. I know that was a really long video. I know that because I started recording at 12 p.m. and it is now almost 7 p.m. But I hope that gave you some inspiration. Maybe you got some ideas for things that you could do with the stream deck that you didn't know you could do before. And guys, if you would like to make your own video about what's on your stream deck, feel free to make your own video. You can post it in the Discord. The link to the Discord is down below. You can also get help there with setting up anything to do with your stream. And if you guys like what you saw today, please subscribe. I haven't asked you guys to do that in a while and I don't know if that even works anymore. Were you already subscribed? Did that work? I'll check. I'm going to check the analytics to see if that worked or not. It probably didn't work.